Yo people, what is I, J Reaper X, and this will be What If Deku Ate the Strange Strange Fruit. Thank you all for 76 subscribers. Really happy about that. We're almost at 100 subs, almost 80 subs. And uh, really sorry for not posting for such a long time. I don't know why I did that. I was just probably lazy. But anyways, uh, let's just start this. What if? Okay. We're going to start, start this off. You know, Izuku just in the house, just woke up, but then he suddenly got excited. You remember that today was the day they were supposed to go to the quirk doctor to find his quirk. I mean, who wouldn't be excited for that, especially a four-year-old kid? He got up joyfully and sprinted to his mom's room. He screamed, Mom! Mom! Today's the day we're gonna go check my quirk to the quirk doctor! Wake up! After the... After screaming, after hearing Deku scream, Izuku's mom jolted up from her bed and looked at him with stars in her eyes. Yes, Izuku, you're right. Today said you were supposed to check your quirk. Come on, let's go. After being all excited, they both did their morning routine and put on some clothes. And they just went in the car. After about a 10 minute drive, they arrived at the hospital. The nurse, uh, the nurse asked Inko if she had an appointment for the day and she said yes. They checked her name and she was indeed right. It was an appointment for Izuku Midoriya. They sat at the lobby just waiting to be called. And then finally, after some minutes, anyone named Midoriya here checking to go, co coming to go check their quirk? Inko and Izuku jolted up from his seat, super excited. Inko just stood, trying to hide her excitement. She was really excited for her son because he always wanted to be a hero. She really wanted him to have a good quirk because she just didn't want him to be sad. Then they walked to the, uh, the doctor's office. The doctor said, Hello there, ma'am. Are you here to check the young boy's quirk? Inko nodded. Izuku was just standing there with stars in his eyes. And he asked, Doctor, doctor, what do I have to do for you to check my quirk? The doctor said, Hey, calm down, kid. Well, I need a blood sample from you. So I want you to be brave for me, okay? Just like All Might. Izuku nodded and extended his arm. The doctor inserted the needle. Izuku didn't flinch. Doctor took his blood sample, just went to the quirk machine to analyze Izuku's quirk. He came back with a frown on his face. He just didn't want to break little Izuku's heart because he was so excited. And that just felt wrong, but he had to do his job and announce the bad news. He sat in his chair in front of Inko and Izuku. Inko looked worried. Izuku was just a little concerned, but was still excited for that. The doctor sighed and said, Well, ma'am, Izuku, I'm sorry to tell you this, but... 
You don't. You're quirkless, Izuku. You're quirkless, kid. Izuku's eyes widen. He was just sad. He just lost hope. All his hope of becoming a hero like All Might shattered just like that. Inko was just worried for his son, cause, and also she was pretty sad because. It has always been her son's dream to become the best hero, to save people. Now, this dream was shattered just like that, just from a few words. Inko felt teardrops coming from her eyes and saw Izuku crying too. The doctor left the office to let them think or should I say, process what just happened. Izuku looked at his mother with teary eyes and said, m m Mom, do you still think I can be a hero without, without a quirk? <laughs> he was, he had tears in his eyes and just crying uncontrollably. But Inko knew what she had to do. As much as she didn't want her son to get hurt, she just couldn't shatter his dream even more. So she said, Yes, Izuku, I believe that you can still be a hero even though you don't have a quirk. I believe in you. And Izuku was just happy that his mother still believed in him, even though he knew society probably wouldn't. He just, only his mother's words mattered to him. He calmed down and just accepted the fact that he was quirkless. Still, he was going to get to peak physical condition and never give up. So after that, Inko and Izuku went back home and Izuku just went to sleep. The next day, he asked his mother, Mom? Enko said, Yes, Izuku? Then Izuku said, C Can I go visit Kachan today? I, I really want to see him. Enko nodded and just told him to get dressed and go in the car. Yuzuku did so, and after a few minutes, he just went to, into his car seat and buckled his seat belt, and they drove off to the park. After driving for a few minutes, they arrived. Yuzuku jumped down the car and waved at his mother. She didn't left, since... It was the house wasn't that far. Izuku saw Katsuki Bakugo and he went to him and said, Hey Kachan, how you doing today? Katsuki Bakugo then replied, Oh, oh, Izuku, how you doing? Today I got my quirk. Izuku had then had sparkles in his eyes and said, Whoa, whoa, really? What's your quirk? Katsuki Baku then proudly showed the sparkles in his hands and said, My quirk is explosions. I can produce explosions with my sweat. Mm. Izuku then went on and just was shocked and felt happy for his best friend. He said, Whoa, catch on! Your quirk is so amazing! With this, you'll be a great hero! Katsuki Bakugo then said, Hey, Izuku, what exactly is your quirk? Izuku then looked down 
in shame and said, Well, I'm quirkless, Scott Sean. I'm quirkless. Katsuki Bakugo looked at him with disgust and said, Ha 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 ha, nerd. No, Deku, that's what you get. You're just a quirkless loser. Deku is going to be your na new name. It means useless. Izuku just was crying and then he called his mom so that she could pick him up and just left. He was sad that his best friend had ditched him because he was quirkless, but this only made his motivation go up. When they arrived home, Izuku was determined. He was determined that he would never give up, no matter what, and he would become a hero, as his mother believed in him. <sighs> and now, we skip to the last of middle school. Izuku has been bullied quite frequently but like I said previously he was bullied a lot but he had a peak physical condition so he could clearly fight back people tried to bully him but he was strong physically he had a toned body he was shredded No one knew, but they just knew he was strong. So we go to the last day of middle school. Teacher says, Well, class, class, as you know, today's the last day of middle school, and you'll be filling out these forms to see what you want to be in the future. The class groaned. They weren't happy about that at all. But then the teacher said, Ha ha, I'm just joking. I know you all want to become heroes. The class then cheered. And they, some of them started using their quirks, except, of course, Izuku and Katsuki Bakugo. The teacher then said, Come on, class, settle down, settle down. You know you're not supposed to use your quirks in class. The class then calmed down. And they went on to pay attention. Teacher said, well, 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 well. Looks like two students want to go to UA. The class was sure that one of them was obviously Katsuki Bakugo, but they were wondering who was the second one. Teacher then continued. Well, Katsuki Bakugo, you get great. You have a good quirk, and you get good grades. You actually might get a good chance of going to UA. Katsuki Bakugo then said, "Yeah, teach. Don't lump me in with these losers." I'm the best of the best. Sorry for the break, but uh, yes, like Bakugo said, Yeah, teach, don't know me in with these losers. I aced the mock exam and I am better than all of these extras. The class groaned and then they were pretty mad at Bakugo, but they knew they couldn't do anything. Anything at all. So they just quietly shut up. Also, pardon me for background noises. Not my fault. So, yeah. Anyways. The teacher said, Well, Bakugo, please settle down. We don't want any angry students here. 
Oh, and also, Izuku Midoriya wants to go to UA. The class was just staring at Midoriya. Then they all burst out laughing. But one of them wasn't having it. And that person was Katsuki Bakugo. He was extremely pissed and mad that Izuku had the nerves to join UA with a person of his caliber. After class calmed down, Katsuki just walked to Deku's desk and just threw an explosion at his desk and said, You damn nerd! How dare you apply to UA! UA can only hold prestigious students like me! Izuku was just not really phased. He wasn't scared or anything. And he looked at Bakugo straight in the eyes and said, Well, Katsuki, Bakugo, how you've been annoying to me these past few years. And I can indeed apply to you, way, as I can already beat your ass. I mean, you've seen how I folded you every single day. You're too weak without your quirk, Bakugo. You are nothing without it. Bakugo just looked at him, kind of shocked that he didn't come catch on. And was just... Just had a realization that the man was right. He's nothing without his quirk. Then Izuku continued by saying, You know, Katsuki, one drop of cold water on your head, and it's over for you. You can't sweat. Nothing. You just freeze. Just feel cold. You won't even sweat. Just that, and it's over for you. Just like that. Somebody could defeat you that easily. A bucket of water. Imagine somebody with a water quirk. If you meet somebody like that, it's done for you. No sweat, no quirk. Or somebody with a nice quirk. Even if they, even if they manage to even hit you with one of their ice attacks, it's over for you. You will be done. Just like that. Now, Katsuki Baku was just taken aback by the facts Izuku was throwing at him. No? All Izuku was stating is just facts. If he can't sweat, no quirk. He becomes useless, just like Izuku. He didn't have a sweat, um, sweat drop running down his face and just sat back, baffled by just what, by what happened. The class was in extreme shock that Izuku was just reacting that way and just basically told him Bakugo's weakness. Then the bell rang and Izuku just took his bag and went out to the classroom and slammed the door without any care in the world. He was going to show every single person that has insulted him or bullied him or just didn't believe in him how good he could be. He would become the first quirkless hero to prove all these people wrong. Then go to him, walking around, just chilling, you know? And it was walking, you know, rethinking his life and basically thinking ahead of what training he could do to increase his strength more. Yeah, things to increase his physical strength. Then he was interrupted by something rumbling underground. Then Sludge Villain popped out of the sewers. Izuku was just pretty shocked, but took a fighting position. Slurvinan said, Ha ha, kid. Nice meat suit you are. Give me your body. 
Izuku had a determined face and went on to punch the slant villain, but the attack just had no effect because such villain was like physical attacks didn't work on the slant villain. Izuku was just, you know, pretty tired after punching the slant villain over and over again. But then, after punching and after the sludge villain launched his tentacles at him and Zuko saw himself die, just got a sudden boost of motivation. He thought about all the people that wronged him and all the people that believed in him and how he would become the number one hero. And after all these thoughts, came a devastating wave of full power, also known as the Conqueror's Hockey. This sudden wave of Conqueror's Hockey immediately knocked out the sludge villain. Izuku just didn't know what happened. Just saw the sludge villain dropping down. Then he himself passed out from exhaustion. He woke up to All Might lightly slapping him. He stayed calm because he knew he couldn't show weakness. But deep down inside, he was excited like a little kid. He stood up and All Might stopped lightly slapping him. And he said, Oh, hey, All Might. How are you doing? All Might then said, Ha ha ha. I'm doing fine, young man. But did you just defeat that sludge villain? Izuku then said, Uh, I probably did. I'm not sure. Then he handed his handbook to All Might with a pen and said, All Might, would you please sign this for me? I'm a really big fan of yours. And then All Might said, Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, sure, kid. Then went on to sign his notebook. Yuzuku was happy that he got an autograph from his idol. Then helped All Might bottle up the sludge villain and just went on with his day. He felt really unhungry, so with the little money that he had, he went to a fruit shop and bought this weird looking fruit and just ate it without a second thought. At first the bite was, the first bite was pretty good, tasted good, and he bit into it a second time and it tasted disgusting. It was absolutely horrendous. He just threw the fruit away. But then, just passed out completely. Then woke up in this weird place and saw a tall man. He had blonde hair, a pink cape, a pink fur cape. He wore some weird, a uh, weird looking attire. Then he looked at him. He was way taller than Deku. Deku barely reached his waist. And he was the height of the average grown adult. Doflamingo looked down on him and said, So you're the brat. <laughs> so you're the brat that ate the, my devil fruit. 
And Deku became even more confusing and said, Uh, who are you and what do you mean by devil fruit? Do Flamingo then responded with, Well, my name is Don Kixot Do Flamingo. See, I was a really powerful person, you could say. And a devil fruit. If devil fruit is a fruit that allows the user to get a special power, mine is the Ito Ito no Mi, also known as the Strength Strength Fruit. It allows me to control strings freely. I can do whatever I want with it and customize it however I want. And Luffy was just, uh, Luffy, Deku was just excited you know because that was such a cool quote-unquote quirk not really but that's what he thought so he said that he was a really good quirk though flamingo just didn't understand and asked uh kid what the hell is a quirk did izuku went on to explain what quirks are how they came from i mean where what uh, the first minute that had a quirk and how they evolved in the hero system. Then Doflamingo just laughed and said, Ah, oh, kid, you seem like a good person, so I'll train you to use my devil food power. And then Deku just nodded, accepting the offer, and just said, uh, well, but uh, well, when the strain begin? And the flamingo said, right now. So, after a few years in the mindscape, which is a few minutes in real life, Izuku just became taller. It looked more mature. So, uh, he was basically the same height as Doflamingo. And if you really want a comp uh, comparison on how he looks compared to normal adults, here it is. So, as you can see, Doflamingo is pretty tall. I don't know how tall the girl is, but... Let's just assume she's your average six foot. Yeah. Your average six foot would only reach his waist. That's how tall Izuku has gone. Now, his hair is blonde now. Don't ask me why, he's just blonde. Yeah, where's. Do Flamingo's glasses, but yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 he wears Do Flamingo's glasses. He basically has a uh, not Do Flamingo's goofy outfit because it looks bad. That's just me, maybe. Uh, but he has a black suit, black, stylish pants, stylish pants. Not, no, no, forget what I just said. He's just grown massively, boom. And he has blonde hair, that's it, bro. No, bro, he still has his green hair, boom, just like that, bro. And let's just say his face has matured a little, okay? That, that's it. Okay, anyways. Izuku learned hockey. Well, he managed to control it. He has pretty good armament hockey. And pretty, really, I guess you could say he has advanced observation hockey. He can see a little into the future. And 
As for his conquerors hockey, it is also in advanced. His armor man hockey is really strong, but he still hasn't reached the advanced state yet. As for his strength powers, he fully mastered them. The Flamingo taught him everything he could. And basically just built him up more muscles. So that he just would be strong physically. Now, today's the last day of training for Izuku in his mindscape. Dove Lamigo is just sitting on a table. And there's a chair right in front of him, and he calls Izuku. Izuku just goes to sit and sits on the chair and says, uh, Hello, Miss. Uh, Master Doflamingo, what have you called me here for? Doflamingo looks at him and says, Well, kid, today is your last day of training, as you know, and I'm going to disappear soon. I've taught you everything I can, and I've done my mission here. I've, I've been dead a long time ago. It's time for me to go. Izuku has slight tears in his eyes because his sensei was just going to disappear just like that. One of the only people that supported him throughout what he, was do what he wanted to do. He didn't regain his composure and says, I understand, sensei. Hope that you may rest well. Doflamingo then smiled and said, well, Izuku, it's time for you to use my power that is now yours for the good of the people. And then he fully disappeared. Izuku then woke up and he saw that his clothes were, you could say, different. He wasn't wearing his school uniform. He was rather wearing um, a pink shirt. Basically, you could say all pink. He even had this weird pink cape behind him. He just didn't mind it since the suit was pretty cool, you know, pink suit. Pink pants, pink shoes, even a pink uh, cape, pink uh, bear cape, I guess you could say. Just really cool, so I didn't mind it. Just walked around, carrying a school bag. He just carried it. Uh, in it with his in his hands, cause it was really really small. After that, after walking for a few minutes, Izuku just heard the sound of explosions. He recognized these explosions. He didn't like what he was going to do, but he knew he had to do it because he wanted to become a hero. He was going to save his quote-unquote bully, or as he calls him, a, a dummy, to train his physical strength. He didn't like the idea of saving him, but it was what he, would, he had to do what he had to do and save Buck. He went there at a pretty fast pace. And he arrived there in a few seconds due to his huge physical strength and his huge stamina. Plus, considering how tall he was, he was just getting there faster. After that, he arrived at the scene and people looked at him pretty shocked because he was 
super tall, even taller than All Might. Uh, Deku was just analyzing what happened. He crouched down and asked a random person. Hey, sir, do you know what's going on here? And uh, the person turned around, trying to hide their shock, and said, oh, oh, Well, sir, as you can see, the heroes are trying to save this kid, but they aren't capable of doing it because of their quirk. It is not suitable for this situation. Yuzuku then smiled and said, Thank you, sir. He stood back up and was pretty mad, you know. He had his veins popped on his forehead and just getting he just contained his anger, but he was still angry, you know. Then proceeded to walk towards where the sludge villain was. The heroes were trying to stop him, but he would just push them aside. Just gently. Then he, he got in front of the sludge villain. And then he said, <laughs> After doing his attack, the sludge villain was completely spread out due to how hot the string was. He then saw Bakugo like in the air because of the impact of his attack. And he just catched him with a spider web and put him gently down on the ground. After that, the people there were completely shocked about what just happened and what they just saw. It was pretty cool, so people cheered. Deku just looked at him and just smiled. And then he looked back at Bakugo with a serious expression. Bakugo knew immediately who it was, but he couldn't believe the changes that Izuku went through. Just a short span of a few hours, or he he or so he thought. Izuku then turned around and looked at Bakugo and said, No problem, Katsuki. Then started walking away. After that, he reached uh, a corner, a turn. And then he saw All Might there. All Might just uh, popped out of nowhere and said, Ah, 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 hello, young. Izuku said, Midoriya, Izuku Midoriya. All Might said, hello, young Midoriya. I came here to congratulate you on saving the boy there. And also I wanted to discuss something about uh with you. And then all oh my just coughed up a little bit of blood. A huge cloud of smoke happened and he just tr transformed into his uh small form, deflated form. <laughs> Izuku was pretty shocked, but he just stayed calm. And he said, uh, well, All Might, first of all, thanks for the compliment, but what the hell happened to you? And All Might goes on to explain about his injury. He also explains about one for all and all for one. Izuku felt bad for All Might because of his injury. So he decided to uh, do something about it. He told All Might, 
Oh, uh, well, all might. I am already powerful as it is. So I'm going to have to decline your offer for one for all. Hope you find a good successor. But I think I might have something to... I think I might be able to fix something. To fix your uh, organs. Well, your injury. All might looked at him in slight shock and said, Are you joking with me, young Midoriya? And Izuku uh, shaked his head no and said, No, no, I'm completely serious, All Might. It won't be painful, so don't worry about it. All Might then nodded and Izuku just started seemingly twirling his fingers around, but in reality, he was just making organs out of string inside of All Might's body. He made a stomach for All Might, his liver, and all the orgs that were missing from the battle against All for One. After about 30 minutes, he was done and said, Well, All Might, looks like it is all done. All Might took a deep breath and said, and he just buffed back up immediately and uh, seemingly automatically and and uh, he took a deep breath and said whoa young doya seems like you weren't lying ha 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 thank you very much for what you did to me i really appreciate it then izuku said no problem all might no problem Anyways, I have to go. So, bye bye. And basically, attach his strings to the cloud and just started seemingly flying. Went back home and he had to crouch down to go to the door because he was so tall. Inko was kind of surprised that her son grew so tall. But she didn't want to question it at all. Well, she kind of asked Izuku to uh, explain what happened. And so he did. Izuku explained how he trained with Doflamingo and how he got his powers. Inko was proud of him, and she was just so in shock, but was just so happy for his son. Now she knew she could become the number one hero. And after the little explanation, Izuku just went on to sleep. He slept, he slept on the floor because he was a little too tall, you could say. And then, he woke up the next day, and we're gonna time skip 10 months. Izuku just been chilling and not really doing anything because he was so powerful. Then, went on the day of the first day of UA. The entrance exam. So, after that, you could just went into the examination room. President Mike explained the written test, which we're gonna skip because it's not important at all. And as for the physical exam, now this is where we're gonna start. President Mike explains the physical exam. The practical exam. He doesn't get interrupted by Lido because he's fast enough to talk about the zero pointer. So no Lido incident happening. Izuku went to his uh, designated gate. People were staring at him because of how tall he was. He seemed like a giant to them. 
and when the gate slightly opened, Izuku was just tired of waiting. He just slashed his arm vertically, and five strings of different colors appeared and slashed the gate open. Izuku then rushed inside, flying around with his string attached to clouds. He started destroying robots. Participants were just shocked, and President Mai had to remind them that heroes don't wait for villains to strike. And they all went. Both of them just saw destruction. A lot of robots rolled apart, scattered, or just cut into tiny pieces. After a few minutes, precisely 10 minutes, we go to Izuku just chilling on a chair he made out of strings. Now to the observation room. We see Aizawa asking for Nezu to Well, after all the destruction they saw, after all the destruction they saw, no, pardon me, after Aizawa asked Nezu to pull out the scoreboard, they just saw Izuku, a person named Izuku Midoriya, with a thousand points, everyone, and uh, teachers lounge or observation room were absolutely baffled. Aizawa just told Nezu to zoom in on that kid and they just saw him chilling on a chair. They wonder where he got that from but they just discarded it. He also asked Nezu to pull out the file of Izuku Midoriya. It then shows on the information of Izuku Midoriya. For his height, it's the same height as Doflamingo. His quirk was string named Izuku Midoriya. Quirk allows the you uh, the person, well himself, to use to make and control strings. They were pretty impressed with Izuku. So yeah, after that, Nezu just wanted to test Izuku, so he pulled out this hero porter. Izuku just saw the his hero pointer and he wasn't really impressed nor scared. We're just gonna, just gonna go. Because he wasn't interested, but then he heard a person scream for help. Yuzuku just couldn't discard that, so he sprinted to the zero pointer. He leaped and then covered his fist in armament hockey and conquered his hockey. People saw red sparkles from coming from his right hand and he punch this your pointer right in this face. This send this your pointer flying back. And it just exploded afterwards. Izuku landed safely. And asked the person if she, if uh, they were okay. The mysterious person said, Yes, I'm fine. Thank you for saving me. I really thought I was gonna die. Izuku just smiled and um, uh, asked the person if they could walk. The person tried but just couldn't. So Izuku healed her leg by stitching it back together. He then she then uh, proceeded to walk and get his name, and he also got her name. Her name was... Ki. 
Kiyoka Jiro. Her name was Kiyoka Jiro. Izuku gave her his number and she gave uh, her number to him too. They just waved at each other and just Izuku just went home. I'm gonna end this video here. Um, I'm probably gonna post part two tomorrow. So yeah, peace out and goodbye. Bye-bye.